Hello and welcome back to Beginning Algebra. We are doing lesson 10 today, solving equations, the multiplication principle. Let's first do example number one. Say we have 5x equaling 25. So from our previous video, we have to remember to always keep the statement true. By doing this, we always make sure we do opposite operations in order to move any number or variable. So for the 5x, we have to isolate the 5 by dividing by 5 to move it onto the other side. So to do this, we can simply just write 1 fifth. That's the same as dividing by 5. So we can do 1 fifth on one side and 1 fifth on the other. So when we do this, 1 fifth times the 5x, you just get 5 over 5 and x. And then on the other side, we just get 25 over 5. It's simply just multiplying fractions. We've done this before. If you do 1 fifth times the 5 over x, it's just imagine a 5 over x over 1 as a fraction. So you just multiply the tops together and the bottoms together, and you get your 5x over 5. You don't have to say x or 1x. You just you can say just x. So the 5 over 5 just is 1, which will be 1x is what would be remaining. And then you make sure you do the 25 divided by 5. So let's do that. So how many times does 5 go into 25? Well, let's see. We can do 5 times 2, which is 10, or 5 times 4, which is 20. Okay, we're getting closer. So 5 times 5 would be 25. So we know that 5 divided by 5 is 5. So we would bring down the x. This would be equal to 25 divided by 5, which we know is 5. So x equals 5. So let's do our check. We know x is equal to 5, so let's plug that into the original problem. And we get 5 times 5, which is equal to 25. So we know that this x is correct. By, by checking it, we know and we verify that. So 25 equals 25. Let's do number 2. Say we have a negative 2x equaling 8. So remember, we want to get rid of the negative, so we have to divide by a negative 1 half. It's just doing the opposite from the multiplication, because negative 2 is being multiplied by x. Remember to put both sides of the equation negative 1 half. So let's bring everything down. Let's do the negative 2 times the divided by negative 2 on one side, and 8 over negative 2 on the other. So negative 2 times, or negative 2 divided by negative 2 would just give you 1. They're both negative, so they become a positive when you divide them. So you're just left with x on one side. So let's do the negative 2 divided by 8. Right now, we don't necessarily need the negative there. You could do the division without the negative and then just add it in later. So let's see, 2 times 2, that's 4. Yeah, that's not quite where we need it to be. So 2 times 3, that's 6. That's getting a little closer. 2 times 4, that's 8. So that's what we need. So we'll have a x of negative 4. So don't forget the negative because we were dividing by a negative 2. So that's your answer. So negative 2x equals 8. Let's plug the x back into the equation. So negative 2 times negative 4 equals 8. Is that true? Let's see. So we have to make sure that 8 equals 8. So negative 2 times 4 is negative times a negative would be a positive. So the answer should be positive. Positive 8. So 8 equals 8. And that is a true statement. Let's do example number 3. Well, let's say we have a negative x equals 3. It's just like saying a negative 1x. That's all that negative x is saying. Just imagine an invisible 1 in front of the x whenever you have a negative sign or another coefficient. So to get rid of this, you just have to simply divide by that negative 1 in order to get rid of it and bring it to the other side. So you want to isolate just x by itself. You don't want a negative x, you want a positive x, always. So to isolate this, you just bring the negative 1 on both sides. So divide by a negative 1. So you can just go 1 divided by negative 1. Or you can write it as negative 1 x minus 1. And that give you equal to 3 divided by 1, negative 1. So when you do the math, you just bring down the x because the negative 1 and 1 just equals 1. And you don't have to write the 1 in front of the x. So you got rid of the x on the, uh, you got rid of the negative on that side. Now you just have to deal with the 3 divided by negative 1. And you know whenever you divide by the negative 1 by any number, it just becomes negative. So your answer would be negative 3. So let's do number 4. Say we have x divided by 3 equals 9. Well, we know that we could write it like this or like this with the 1 third times x. It's, it's the same value, different way of writing it. So since one-third, we're dealing with a fraction, we're dividing by 3 already, so we have to multiply 3 by both sides in order to isolate the x. So let's go ahead and do that. Add 3 on one side and 3 on the other. So we have 3 over 3 times x, and 9 times 3 is 27, so it equals 27. So we know 3 divided by 3, that's just 1, so that you're just left with x on one side and 27 on the other side. So we're left as x equals 27. So we can plug the x back into the original equation. Let's go ahead and do that. See, our x is 27, so 27 would be on the top of 3. So 27 divided by 3 equals 9. Well, let's see if that works. How many times does 3 go into 27? Well, we can try 8. No, that's not quite. That's 24. 3 times 7. I mean, 3 times 9. We'll try 3 times 9. That will be 27. So we know 27 divided by 3 is 9. And so 9 equals 9. That's a true statement. So we know that our x is valid. That will be the concluding lesson for lesson 10. Thank you for watching. Please rate and subscribe. I'll see you next time.